Welcome back everyone to Vox Markets. My name is Paul Hill and I'm delighted again to be able to speak to Jay LeCue, the exec chairman of Source Bio International, a leading COVID testing, medical diagnostics, lab services and genomics firm. So welcome, Jay. Hi, Paul. Thank you. Big congrats on this morning's uh, contract announcement with a, with my, a dear to my heart, actually, the Rugby Football Union. So you just give us a bit of play, a bit of colour on the actual deal and what's involved. Yeah, I mean, not bad. We we're, we're pleased to be able to sign this one up. Uh, I mean, you know, the press release says what it is as far as testing the different leagues, uh, the different teams. But I think what I, what I want to point out is it's, it's our ability to bring in third party providers to do the swabbing on site. We can then bring those tests back to Nottingham. So we are increasingly moving more into a, a mobile application, a, an application where we can test people on the ground. I think that's the importance of this deal. Well, I, I mean, I'm a fan, and I'll tell you, it's pretty important to me because I mean, the, the matches haven't been won't be cancelled going forward. We've certainly had some big games which have already been uh, has to be postponed. Is there any read across at all to other professional sports or elite, elite sort of like um, you know, sort of like performing arts or anything else whereby it's absolutely essential that people need to be COVID clear? Well, we're certainly talking to other industries, tra travel, entertainment. Um other sport uh, events won't, won't say anything now, obviously, but we've got some things in the works in the pipeline that might be, might be nice to add to the, to the, to the deal plate. Okay. And what about the sort of like, uh, can you remind investors on the sort of the, the capacity for PCR testing in the Nottingham facility at the moment? I know when we chatted in January, there's been a lot of movement since then in terms of, you know, how busy you guys have been, but I think it was about 10 and a half thousand tests per day, which was sort of like tracking at the start of January. Are we still about that sort of level, is it? The capacity? Yeah, we've got the capacity for 10, five a day in Nottingham. We can increase that. In fact, we, we could easily increase that if we need to. We're not right now. We are. We also have these mobile units that are yes. adding capacity. Uh, we're looking at other mobile activities uh, and other uh, venue-driven activities, which will increase our capacity, uh, both on the ground and in Nottingham. And the Nottingham one, you've got like four, um, I guess, the sort of like converted trucks with sort of like uh, PCR testing and, and lab people in, 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 the, in, the, in the back doing it. It, it, and that, if that's sort of like a thousand to fifteen hundred tests per per truck, then that means you've got somewhere between an extra four to six thousand tests capacity. Is are they actually deployed at the moment? Because I mean, you're going to have masses of surge testing coming soon. I'm guessing. Well, we we don't we don't know that for a fact, but I think we um, we we announced the one mobile agreement with the trailers that has actually Oxford Nanopore's lamp core oh, technology okay. yep, going yep. on. Um, there are other mobile trailer opportunities we are looking at, which we have not uh, been to the point we want to announce those yet, but we may have things to announce uh, on that uh, soon. OK, look forward to that then. And then also, you've, you've been doing a lot in the, uh, in the background since we last spoke, and it was um, increasing your capacity in, uh, in California, putting uh, 5,000 tests per day into the, um, the San Diego facility, I think you announced a couple of weeks back. Can you just ex expand on that, just on the timing and, and why you've decided to do it now rather than, say, last year or, or whatever? Well, I think, uh, one, we're starting off with 1,000, getting to five. So I don't want everybody to think we've got five on the, you know, day one, yeah, but yeah. we are going to get to the five. We, what, what was happening last year in San Diego was we moved our facility from L.A. to San Diego. We had difficulty getting our people in there to do the validation of some of the storage areas and getting some of the sequencing up and running. So we are now at the point where we can now bring in the COVID. It just would have been very difficult yeah. trying to get all that done with the travel restrictions that were in place. And then San Diego had a big spike and some massive infection that everybody was working at home for a month. Oh, cool. So we just needed to wait until we could actually get in there to get this done. So now that we can, we're going to be offering it out of the U.S. Working with partners we've got in the U.K. Uh, won't mention them now, but there are many of our current customers in the U.K. would like to expand into the U.S. with us and we can easily leverage our capabilities there. Brilliant. And how easy has it been able to get sort of equipment to do the uh, the PCR testing? I mean, it's been sort of like, must be must be quite difficult, I would have thought. But, uh, well, Thermo Fisher's down the road from our office, so it's not that difficult. Oh, to that's get handy kit. then. You know, and then there's a, there's a very good skill base in San Diego. It's just sort of the center of uh, biotech in Southern California. So it's, it's, it's a great place to attract talent. Uh, so we're, we're, we're pleased with, uh, with, our, with our progress to go to, to today. Yeah, great. Well, I mean, my, my my wife works at a local school and they've gone back today and they're going to be having to test the pupils and the staff twice a day, yeah. which nationally means there's going to be 20 million lateral flow tests every single week. And the sort of like the modus operandi, at least at my wife's school, 
is that everybody who gets a, a sort of positive result on a lateral flow is going to have is being advised to then get a PCR. So I'm right. guessing you. How do you see the sort of industry developing, both in the short, long, and medium term, in terms of you know different tests and PCR and, and lateral flow? Because it's going to be an enormous amount of testing going off in the next three months, no doubt about it. Yeah, I, I, it's a good question. I, I, you know, I think there's there's the short term and then there's more of the longer term. So certainly short term, lateral flow is going to be an important part of the government initiative to try to contain this this yeah. this outbreak and, and pandemic. We are actively looking at uh, at other technologies to support that effort. Uh, other than just PCR, we do like the fact that a confirmatory is a PCR test. Uh, but you know, this is just from a study that I recently read that you you know you've got really you've got the hospital market to make sure people are are not infected when they go into a hospital. You've got general population screening, which is sort of this, this lateral flow. You've got safety screening, which is also lateral flow potentially at sporting events. So you could, you could envision where even the RFU could go to some type of lateral flow and then have yeah. a PCR confirmatory. We would be a part of that if, if, if you know, we would certainly want to be a part of that. Um, you've got employee uh, testing yeah. that you need to do. And then you've just got testing for immunity, which is a whole nother aspect of this, where once the vaccine is rolled out, you're going to want to test for immunity using antibody tests. Yeah. And we are looking at all of these areas of testing to, uh, to be involved in, uh, simply because we, you know, it was nice we started off in PCR, but we're increasingly working with our customers to make sure we're there to meet their needs across the band uh, with of, of the testing uh, opportunities. Yeah, you've got a sort of platform, haven't you? Healthcare grade services, either Nottingham or in mobile, yeah. and you can pick and choose whatever best in class technology wins. So effectively, you're the sort of like you know, the high value niche uh, sort of operators who actually deliver those services into the population, I guess. I mean, well, thank you for saying that. We, we try. We try very hard. <laughs> hey, you, you're certainly helping my, my uh, wife's school, that's for sure, and the sort of the health service. So a big tick in the box there. But you're right, you raise a very good point in terms of all the businesses, because likewise, today, they're being offered all free lateral flow tests. And again, it's going to be, if they get any positives, they're going to ask their employees to get PCR tested. And, and there was an important data point, again, over the weekend, which investors should, uh, should remember, that Portugal and, and Cyprus want UK tourists to go, go, go down the Med in the summer. But they're insisting such that, you know, if you come if you come into the country and you've got basically, a, you know, a positive result, you're going to have to quarantine in your hotel, in your hotel room. And now nobody wants that. So anybody who's a tourist is either faced with with purchasing a lateral flow, which might cost them, I don't know, 15 quid and then run the risk of actually having to quarantine, having spent three or four thousand quid on their hospital on, on their holiday and booking their time off or spending, I don't know, 50, 60, 100 quid on a PCR. So. The, yeah. When it comes to travel, it's probably this summer PCR or a high level of accuracy is almost definite. I would certainly not travel and run the risk of wrecking my holiday on the other end without having a PCR. That's for sure. Well, it's it's a it's a very good point. We we certainly think the travel market once you know you've got the majority of restrictions lifted is going to take off. Even our major retail partner is planning on gearing. They're gearing up for that right now. That's going to be some pull through for PCR tests. I can tell you that we know. All of the major airports in the UK and around the world are setting up on-site PCR testing services to do exactly that. So, so as long as PCR is the sort of uh, yeah. passport to get on a plane, that's what's going to happen. And we are again working. That's why we're working on this mobile capability of ours, plus having the you know these third-party providers do the swabbing that we could just fit right into those wherever it is in in the country. Yeah, and then and that mobile concept is really interesting. I and mean, this is a really sort of like you know off the wall sort of a lateral idea, I guess. But, I mean, we're going to have variants, and we've already proved there are lots of right. horrible variants. And if it, let's just assume that the, um, you know, the last 12 months is reflective of what's going forward. We're going to have at least two or three really highly infectious uh, mutants coming through um, every sort of 12 months, nine months. Now, if you run it such that the vaccine is going to take at that sort of time, six to nine months to get fully deployed, having been sequenced and stuff, is there any opportunity for mobile sequencing in the in the uh, in the community? Because we've got to pick these up really quickly and know whether they're you know what their actual DNA is to be able to then process and see whether they're dangerous. Is that is that sort of like a just a really left field thing, and they wouldn't really be useful, or is it or, or is that maybe a possibility? 
Well, it depends on what system you're using. If you if we have a NovaSeq in Cambridge, and that, that would be difficult to make mobile. But what yeah. we are doing is we are part of this, you know, two day, eight day um, testing that the government's uh, mandating. Where if you get a positive, it needs to be sequenced. So we're able to do that at our center in uh, in, yeah. in Cambridge. So we're part of the whole genomic sequencing of positives, which then increases the database of variants. Um, so that's we're part of that effort as well. Okay. I mean, I'll, again, I'll just highlight to investors that you know if we look sort of like you know further through the lens and we get we continue getting variants, then the whole world is going to have to catch up, keep catching up in terms of you know, what the actual stage and how, how the actual virus has, uh, has changed itself, that protein spike. And on that basis, then there's always going to be, a, a, you know, outbreaks and flare-ups that we're going to have to capture, whether it's through PCR testing, sequencing, et cetera. Right. And, I, right. and I remember last time when we spoke and uh, I did a bit of sort of like top-level scenario modeling. And I reckon that you know, if you could drop through, you could assume 30, uh, 30 million of revenue for, for, P, for um, COVID testing going forward from 2023 onwards, it would add an extra one pound to the share price. So as a scenario analysis, hypothetical, but I, I thought I'd just, uh, you know, point that out to, um, to sort of like investors. Now, just, just separately, when are the, when when's your best top level thought again industry wise nothing really sort of specific to 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 sort of source bio but when do you think the sort of the healthcare authorities are going to start being able to get through or start getting through the huge backlog of you know biopsy screening cancer screening because that's going to obviously impact the sort of launch trajectory of of, of source bio's healthcare diagnostics business i mean i can say that it's it's uh, it's coming and I know I've said that every time we get on the get on one of these calls, but it's coming. We know there's a significant effort to move it forward. Uh, it's 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 again because of this new variant and because of the lockdown that we've had that delayed it again. But it is coming, and 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 the longer we wait for it to come, the larger that wave is going to be. Is is pretty much what I can share with you. And we are gearing up to to meet that because there's. You know, there's there's a lot going on with pathologists in the UK where yeah. there, there is going to be a very much of a shortage when this thing hits. And they're going to need third party providers like Source to to help them get through this. Yeah. I mean, I think the you get into a stage at the moment where there's actually almost more indirect deaths and mental problems from COVID, given you've been 12 months into this thing than almost with with the vaccinations, almost the actual fatalities from the disease. So yeah. we're all we've reached that sort of tipping point, unfortunately, because it isn't just cancer. It's you know, I don't know, kidney yeah. transplants and all and hip operations and and all that kind of stuff as well. Just uh, just we've obviously got the prelims coming out in um, in April sometime. Are there is there likely to any news flow at all on, on terms of the um, the DHCS contract at all the, the framework deal? I mean, I know the whole industry is waiting, so you're not any different to anybody else. But um, I mean, I'm guessing they've got the hands full so much, and you you you're doing your surge testing and stuff, so you're really busy anyway. But it obviously is this is this likely to happen, or is it really just going to be keep pushing to the right? Well, what I can say is anybody that's been awarded into the framework is not allowed to say they've been awarded into the framework and okay. the government <laughs> announce it. So right, okay. I'm not going to say we've been, I can't say where we are with the yeah, framework, okay. but the government has to announce it before we can say anything. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, we look forward to hearing about that uh, going forward. And uh, again, thanks very much for your time, Jay. And uh, uh, best of luck with the uh, with all the sort of like activity which is happening. It's a really, really busy time for the company, but absolutely crucial to get the company back on its feet. And I think as, again, top level, Rishi Shunak has spent £300 billion trying to get the uh, you know people back to work and in, in right. jobs. And PCR, or basically COVID testing, PCR or whatever it is, the leading technology will be needed as a key sort of like uh, right. mechanism to be able to bring everybody back into the workforce. So right. uh, thanks very much. Couldn't Jeff. agree more. Thank you, Paul. Best. Cheers and bye. All right, take care. Bye-bye.